name's Spidey. Welcome to the Breezeway. Hi, I'm Duke Bossanova. And I'm Lola Bossanova. And today we're in Costa Mesa, California to visit one of the most illustrious, or shall we say infamous, Ooh, infamous. home tiki bars in the entire United States of America. Hello, it's Spike himself. Oh my gosh. Is and it the king uh, of tiki? The it's king the of tiki. king of tiki. <laughs> and look at, we've got a little cute dog. Who's Sparky? <laughs> I'll get him, I'll go get him, I'll go get him. There's a dog, there's a dog barking. <laughs> How are you today, fine sir? I'm very good, I'm happy to have you guys here. I know, your house is as dazzling as I expected it to be, mm. which is impressive. Thank you very much, <laughs> You set uh, high standards. Uh, so tonight we're gonna make a cocktail called the Breezeway. All right, yeah. after the Breezeway. <laughs> Let's grab some bottles. And we're headed out to the infamous Breezeway. Yeah. What do you feel, Lola? I feel like I'm behind the scenes. Do you feel like you're on a, on a TV, TV set? Show. Yes. It's You're behind fun. the scenes of your favorite TV show. Yeah, there's a crowd back here, guys, and they're all ready to clap mm -hmm. whenever we have the applause. <laughs> Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. It is a full TV set, basically, you know? Yeah. The, the bummer about having it as a set for my YouTube show is that it, yep. it's always set up with cameras and lights and, mm. yeah. You know. I yeah. mean, so, okay, so not just the bummer, also that's really nice because it makes it easy yeah. for you yeah. to shoot and share it with everybody else. But yeah, yeah. You, if you want to just come out and but, hang out. Well, come on, guys. This is as tall, this is, what, three feet taller than Lola. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be eight feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, the light. <laughs> it's a tall like, light. Like, this is taking up a lot of, this is taking up a lot of the breezeway. I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> Look at the size of it. <laughs> oh I'll show you <laughs> one of the that's things that, that I love about this light here is if I, if I turn off this light, if I do want to turn it back into just hang out party time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Walk out. I can rotate this. And then you can turn it to a strobe. And then I can oh, pull it up. Then it just goes up. Hoist. With a he can hoist the And then I hoist. tie it off here. A vasty matey. Oh, I love that. So what are we making tonight? All right, so we're gonna make a cocktail from the Breezeway, something I came up with called the Breezeway. The Breezeway. Uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the fruit portion is easy to remember because it's three quarters of an ounce of each fruit. Is, what, it, what is this? Is this a pomelo? This, <laughs> this is a white grapefruit. Oh. Which, is, <laughs> a white grapefruit. <laughs> which is the grapefruit that you want yeah. yes. for tiki cocktails. Correct. And when I moved- the bitter, yeah. bitter one. And when I moved into the house, I looked over to the fence and I was like, what's hanging over the fence? And it was a white grapefruit tree. He has one. You haven't watched all those videos. Whoa, though. I haven't. There's too many of them. <laughs> I feel like we I can like get them. We can me. get them in Oregon where we live a couple times a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta deal with weather there. Yes, yeah. we yep. have what, And we it's have usually the, one of the specialty grocery stores. We have the bad seasons. You only have the like, good seasons. We've got seasons. white grapefruits. <laughs> I gotta deal with a barky dog, is all I have to deal with. That's okay, so I have riled up the barky dog. He's very cute and sweet, but we are playing There's ball. a reason why his name is Sparky. He's very Sparky. Oh my, and we did. Sparky. Sparky said hi to us when we came in. I think every every cheeky bar needs to have a mascot. It's Sparky's our mascot. Sparky's a mascot. Sparky's cool, my new buddy. <laughs> Lola, did you find a new friend? I did find a new friend. Yeah, Everybody look at that. Sparky. He's such a sweetie. And you did bring him a treat. I did bring him a treat. Of course. It's probably a slobbery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so three quarters of an ounce of white grapefruit juice. I'm just gonna strain out the seeds here. Thank you, we appreciate that. Certainly. <laughs> three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, and then the same with orange juice. Three quarters of an ounce. 
Sorry, this recipe has like 18 ingredients. No, that's okay. The fresh juices are the best. I mean, if you're not making cocktails with fresh juices, then I think you should probably give up on cocktails. Then what are you even doing? What are you even doing? Yeah. So I have, and maybe Spike will give him a gift one time. So I have one of those little chunk ones. Oh, I, yeah, I got a couple of those. Oh, you too. got, you're like, yeah. I don't like those. Oh, no, I love it. You have not been watching our videos at <laughs> all. I am love crushing it. them. Get, get all those oils. Justin okay. Scard gave me one of those. Oh, did he? He's a good friend. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> I know, but on his show, he's always like, I don't really drink at all. And I'm like, um, well, that's the only time he does drink is when he's here. So yeah. it's like, I only see him drinking. <laughs> okay, so then a quarter ounce each of cinnamon syrup. Yum. Yeah. And you make your own syrup? Of course. Course. I suspect you see your friends drinking because they're at your house. <laughs> and what else were they gonna do here? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look at my notes over here. Falernum, mm. which is a delicious ingredient. I made falernum once. It was oh, really you did? hard. Yeah, it took a lot of work. You, you use uh, cheesecloth and stuff? Yeah, and there was a lot of stuff in it. I, I feel like you should only make falernum with a group of friends because it went bad before we came. Oh, yeah, it only lasts. Oh, yeah. A couple weeks. Yeah. It goes quick. Yeah. It was. It made a, like a, a big old. It doesn't go bad in the. It, it doesn't go bad in the breeze way. You open it. Oh my gosh! Lola opened it I all mean. by herself. <laughs> I'm real strong. Okay. Well. <laughs> it's very emasculating. Okay. Quarter ounce each of falernum. Delicious. Okay. Spike's looking for a group of friends to make some falernum with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. And then quarter ounce of simple syrup each. On my okay. show, we take a whole hour to do it. Well, not an hour. It's a breezeway cocktail hour, yes. but it's usually like it's, 20 minutes. I watch enough of them, I know it's not an hour. <laughs> well, it's like 30, it's probably, 36 it pro minutes, let's, let's be fair, it probably minutes. took you an hour, but you edited it down by cutting out all the dead spots between the words. True. It keeps it moving. Okay. That's no drunk. one wants to see we that. We don't want dead space. <laughs> now, ginger syrup, we're gonna use one teaspoon each. Yeah, that's a strong. Ginger syrup is delicious. It gives it almost kind of like an oriental flair. Yeah. It's like a thing, right? Yeah. Fiery ginger syrup. Is that what syrup? you use in the Suffering Bastard? I don't... Ginger mm. beer. Yeah. Ginger beer, you're you right. You talk about ginger beer. Very close. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Let's do the rum. So we're going to do one ounce each of Dr. Bird. So two ounces here for two drinks. And white stash. We want to use one Oh, no. The top of this corked... That's the way I do it. She gets mad when I do that. Your teeth are not tools. My dentist told this me that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've done this before, and then my teeth hurt for like a couple hours, and Lola keeps giving me a hard time. <laughs> and that's the end of my white stash. You know why I was named white stash? Somebody, Santa Claus. I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm afraid to answer this one. Ed Hamilton has a white mustache. Oh. He was like, I'm naming okay, it after okay. my mustache. Well yeah, played. Yeah. Okay. Which is super Even weird. It has a stash on it. it yeah. Does. There we go. Weird. I mean, the most famous, I was thinking of the most famous person with a white stash, Santa Claus. Obviously but. Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, so that's basically the drink there. And then what we're going to do, Ooh, these, are these are Breezeway cocktail hour glasses. There's mm, a couple of pinnacles. Everybody pearls. needs some of these beautiful yeah. glasses. Well, you don't you have, have custom them. glassware well, like Spike. You should. I bet there are other ones that are going to come out, right? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. So be on the lookout. Sadly, these are sold out. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is an ounce of, of soda water per drink. So here, and I like to do this first so that when you pour the drink in on top of it, mm, it combines. Yeah, it's nice. Without having to stir and like break those bubbles. Yeah. So it just kind of nicely combines exactly. it. Exactly. No, I don't know much, much about cocktail making, but I know that. Can, is he stuck over the fence? Yeah, he's stuck over the fence. You want me to go get him? <laughs> Sure. He sounds like a dog from Lockstar. I know. He's a, should, we, should we all go get Sparky? So Sparky has disappeared. Hey, We're going to go hunting for Sparky. You don't have to get Sparky. Last time Sparky. He went... Jump the fence. Sparks, come here. Sparky, come here. He is stealing the show because you know he's adorable. He, you know why he jumped the fence? Because he knows a volcano was over there somewhere. <laughs> We have our soda water in the glasses, yep. and then we're gonna go ahead and put some pebble ice. Uh, I love, I, every time I see this, I'm like, this is gonna, I'm gonna steal this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal it, Don't but steal I appreciate this. I need it. For my eyes. it. <laughs> <laughs> just for like eight seconds or so, and we just wanna froth it up. That's kind of the goal of the Hamilton Beach. Add air into the cocktail. Nice. 
This plane doesn't mess around. He's got all the OG equipment. Yeah, that's from the 40s. And then we're just gonna add some ice to fill. Except for the ice. The ice is not from the 40s. He made that fresh inside. Hello. From Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Normally I'd garnish this with like a uh, like a purple orchid or something, mm -hmm. but unfortunately I don't have any of that stuff here. It's not orchid season, or maybe it is. I don't know. We brought we brought you a pineapple. <laughs> oh, we could do. Okay, I have an idea. Pineapple means hospitality. So yeah, if you ever want to, that's all yeah. that it means. Whenever you go to someone's house, you bring a pineapple. In this case, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of weird <laughs> other meanings behind pineapples these days. We, don't turn it upside down, okay, Spike? The innocence of pineapple. I know. <laughs> they're so innocent. Some dirty, dirty pineapple. Okay. <laughs> they did the pineapple dirty. We can. Look at that, guys. Oh no. We'll shoot. We'll, we'll just there cut we to the end. <laughs> just cut to the end. Look at how gorgeous that is. Okay, I want one too. Okay. All right, and so that, by the way, is more than a lot of tiki bars do. So yeah, ta-da! <laughs> Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. This is the Breezeway. Oh, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous. Guess what? I get to drink it. Is this the reason why you like to go to home tiki bars, Lala? Well, I do like to get some free booze. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, sorry, that was a bad cheers. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. It's very well balanced. <laughs> it's it's like tangy, but mm -hmm. also has like that ginger syrup, which yeah. is very, it's like an unexpected flavor. So it's a flavor. little fieriness to it, a little, just a little heat. A little so, heat. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm always looking for a little bitter, a little tang, a little heat, a little mm -hmm. sweet. You can taste it, Duke. Yeah, so, uh, okay, let me, I'm gonna get the camera. We're gonna do All a little right. switcheroony. A moment of truth here. Oh, damn. <laughs> Now he's regretting not having one. So my favorite tiki drinks always have ginger in them. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is it. I gotta get this is danger in danger in a glass. I gotta do the back of the wall. Thank you very much. Yeah. That is really good. Thank you for making this. This is yeah. really why I mentioned the suffering bastard first. It's one of my favorite. I love yeah. the suffering bastard. Uh, my other one would be Starkest Early. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a a ginger little ginger beer, yeah. This little splash of ginger beer. One of the only copyright drinks. True. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. Is it three dots on dash also copyrighted? Yep. I think that's the only and one. I think the painkiller is pain as well, yeah. yeah. This is the guy. This is the guy who would know. This uh, is the expert. So. I, yeah, I, I mean I've I've made almost I think two hundred cocktails on the video on the wow. on the show that I have. And um it yeah, it just started out of out of uh, COVID and like mm -hmm. started making cocktails on YouTube. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your house. Like, what is your inspiration for inside the house before we get all the way out to the tiki bar? The house was built in 1962. Okay. So I think it's like a mix of kind of like 50s bachelor pad, but also 60s modern, <laughs> like space age. And uh, this is kind of almost more 50s, I think, 50s, 40s. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of a mishmash of vintage cultures. I love it. It's You're doing an amazing job. Thanks. And so how long have you lived here? I've lived here for like 13 years, I think. So you've had a minute to get it all fixed up. Yeah. To bachelor pad it out. <laughs> yeah. It was like low ceilings before and kind of cramped, blew out the ceilings. And it's a little more jet center. Sure. Yeah. And you know, I'm usually not one who likes um, remodeling vintage things, mm -hmm. but the place is already so far gone from what it was originally that I'm like, you know, let's just Kind of taking it back a little bit though. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's it's probably more vintage looking than any other house on the block. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I know when we pulled up, I'm like, that has to be Spike's house. With the bright yellow one. <laughs> yeah. Totally. All right. This is amazing. Thank you so much for letting us tour inside. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> We've known you and run into you at Viva Las Vegas, I'd say seven years now. Maybe eight. I don't yeah. even know exactly how long. I can remember the first time I ran into you. Mm -hmm. was at the car show, and I went walking by. So it would have been, yeah, I'd seen you from the Hula Girls and some oh, other yeah. things, and I'm like, holy crap, that's Spike. And so I said hi. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here we are in your bar. This is the first time we've ever actually <laughs> been to your house or your bar. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you so much for having us yeah, today. Yeah, happy to have you guys here. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, it is uh, 
like Lola said, it feels like you're on a TV I show. I know. We are famous <laughs> just by association. <laughs> by association. <laughs> How about you? What's your favorite TV bar? What I, I don't know. You know, we just did an episode on. Has has he ever answered this question? You no, know, I think I have answered this question, and it, it it jumps around because it's like, what do you base it on? Do you base it on decor? Yeah. Do you base it on like atmosphere and music? Do you base it on the cocktails? Um, we just did a video on my channel about the Royal Hawaiian and Laguna Beach, mm -hmm. which was built in 1947, but recently redesigned by Notch Gonzalez, who did Holly Pele yeah. in Portland. Yeah. Voted the number one tiki bar in the United States several years in a row. Yeah. Like, I, being from Oregon, I gotta plug it. <laughs> gotta plug it. He, he designs gorgeous, gorgeous tiki bars. So I, I don't know if the Royal Hawaiian is my favorite, but it is certainly, like, locally one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I think the cocktail program at, um, at Strongwater in Anaheim is just next level. Um, but also I like vintage tiki bars, like you said, like uh, the, the Tonga Room in San Francisco. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if I have an, oh yeah, I do have an answer. And, and the reason I, I never mentioned this is because on my show there's a moratorium. We're not allowed to say the Mai Kai because that's, if you've been to the Mai Kai in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's everybody's favorite. Oh, yeah. We it's... have not been, but next year we're hoping to go. No. So. I would say the most dazzling one I've been to was Tiki Tasuya in Austin. is insane. I think I'm going there it in the is, next month. We've been there twice. Beautiful. It is amazing. Their the bartenders are, are also. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, good. it's a showstopper like, for sure. Yummy and different. Yeah. So, yeah. Every time we go to Austin, that's like, but it's hard. Where are we going? It's a hard thing to answer because there's so many beautiful mm -hmm. with the. But yeah, I, I like the ones the where I feel like Quentin Tarantino would shoot a movie. <laughs> Those, that's to me because like that's. I, I'm, a, I'm, shot the, the, I'm from the parking lot. I'm from the '90s rockabilly <laughs> Tiki revival era, yeah, yeah. and that's what you had. Mm -hmm. And there was an element of danger to all of it. The girl, the pinups were a little dangerous. They might stab you a little bit. They, were, they, they weren't like this. Bit. They weren't sweeties like they are. I mean, like yeah, it was yeah. like the, the rockabilly scene, the tiki scene was just a different. He likes thing. a little grungy. Yeah, I, I also <laughs> love beef flicks and horror movies. So yeah, go figure. One of the big revival bars in the '90s um, in LA was the Lava Lounge. And my steel guitar player, Gary Brandon, played there in the Blue Hawaiians. And he said that Tarantino would show up there. He said that Nick Cage would show up there. And he said that <laughs> oh Johnny Ramone would show up there. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Not all together. No, uh, oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. They all walk. That sounds it's like a, a weird joke. Party. We need they a time machine, Lola. Yeah. <laughs> we need a tiki time machine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be a great name for a car. I just thought of it. <laughs> the tiki time machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
What were we talking about? Well, before the police chase? Yes. There was a police chase, guys. There was. Yeah. This was all developed for a TV show. That's right, yeah. It was all developed for a TV pilot called Building Paradise. And then that never went anywhere. Um, and you just made a video about that that came out like, yeah. in the last week or so. Yeah, so it like chronicles the whole beginning build of this place. Like, since then, obviously everything's changed radically. But there are little, like, touches that Mm -hmm. Bamboo Ben originally put in like this this matting back here mm -hmm. and like the whole grid for the, the lights up here. And, well, and this is one of the things I love about your tiki bar is, I mean, obviously uh, our tiki bar at home has lots of backpack cloth and matting, yeah. things like that. But you have like a variety. You don't just do the one. That's how you g get those layers going yeah. by not just sticking to one style of matting. All over it, which is uh, unfortunately that's what we have. Just <laughs> I I think that the one style of matting thing is um, is really nice for a particular particular look. But if you're looking for like a, a really immersive yeah. thing, then I think you want to keep people guessing all the time by where they look. Mm -hmm. Like the best tiki bars are the, are the tiki bars that you go into that you never see. You you notice new things every time. So I, I guess that's kind of the goal is to to keep people interested the whole time that they're in your tiki bar mm -hmm. and want them to come back because it was so interesting. You, you built this new bar yourself mm -hmm. and I love the little, what I would call islands that you have them kind of sitting on. In yeah. fact, I don't know if I've seen anyone else do that before you. Did you get that idea from someone else or did you just do that yourself? I don't think so. I, I think the idea was to create, like you were saying, like layers, you know? Yeah. And dimension in the bar. like to create some level. I think um, without building like a big place where you step way up, I think this is probably the best way to kind of fake, you know, multi-floor mm -hmm. kind of thing, so. Alrighty. Okay, so. Well, has uh, got questions. I have questions. And Spike has answers. <laughs> How'd you end up behind the bar? I, I just was like, I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna drink my drink and I'm gonna ask all the questions. So, All right. let's get ready. Okay. We've so, got the Klieg lights and everything. <laughs> you will answer the questions. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So you, how many drinks have you made? You said you, 200 and... I think I'm in like like 180 or so. Uh, something okay. like that. Yeah, so, we're getting close to 200. And your favorite. My favorite cocktail? To make, like that you found and created and showed to people on your... Okay. I think my favorite ones are usually like the ones with in interesting garnishes. Okay. Yeah. So I always like doing the Navy Grog because it has the ice cone and, and people are usually like taken aback by this yes. weird like ice garnish. Yeah. Um, I also like doing like the like ice shell. So it's like in a daiquiri okay. glass, but it's an ice shell that forms over the, the thing. Um, yeah, so I guess I like the, the gimmicky cocktail. So fire's super fun. <laughs> fire is fun and everybody likes good fire. Yeah. But as far as like best cocktail, best tasting cocktail, I don't know, like Sidewinder's Fang, maybe the classic zombie. Yeah. Versions of the the Mai Tai are always good. Was there anything that was like surprising? Like you're looking for a drink, you wanted something new to show people, something maybe that was classic but you knew most people didn't know about. No, I think most people know the drinks. Well, yeah. I've, I've made a <laughs> lot of drinks from like the 1972 Bartender's Guide from Trader Vic's, and there's a reason why nobody knows a lot of those drinks. Yeah. <laughs> because they're yeah, like true. they're a mess. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried my hand at making some cocktails and I was like oh there's had some amazing people on your show <laughs> was there anybody that you got on that you were just like they're never gonna come on or this is super exciting oh I, I thought you were gonna say they're they're never coming on again <laughs> like they're th never that's coming us, back. That's, a, that's us Lola <laughs> we're never coming back <laughs> Um, oh, like like guests that I, I was surprised that they agreed to it yeah Billy zoom from X oh okay yeah was it was a yeah. big deal Well, yeah, recently we, we blew the, the, the ceiling out mm -hmm. and then um, added like this big A-frame. So now the ceilings are super high and <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this back corner here. Like the idea will eventually be stacked boxes, but well, maybe- It looks like a little Indiana Jonesy, like the back of a ship, maybe Tales of the Golden Monkey. Yeah. Um, I think the idea eventually is gonna be stacked boxes only about like four inches deep. Yeah. So I can still open this door, but it looks like there's a stack of boxes. Yeah. So okay. like a little bit of Disney kind of magic. magic. He's got a little adventure bar in the corner action, and then we're moving on to straight Papua New Guinea. 
<laughs> but yeah, but all these hats and stuff that I have um, are gonna end up being probably the tops to lamps. Oh, wow. So, hats. The tops of these? Yeah. I made, I made almost all those lamps. Oh my gosh, those are beautiful. Thanks. Oh, wow. I'm swinging his lamp. Yes, Being very careful. Uh, are you swinging his lamp? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then these these chairs are from Don the Beachcomber in Sunset Beach, where the Hula Girls performed uh, 200 something shows during the, the time that Don the Beachcomber existed there. I'm glad that I had the privilege of visiting Don the Beachcomber. Oh, you did. I'm sad that you weren't there performing that night. Yeah. And now this is your original bar that you used to have for the show. Yeah, yeah, that's the the Whitco bar that I got north of LA, Palmdale or something for $200. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's looking for tiki stuff and who complained that I find these crazy deals, I would say that, that you just have to be looking all the time because the, the deals do pop out, pop up out there. And you have to be ready to jump in a car at a moment's notice. At a moment's notice, I mean, You were yeah. just interviewing Justin and Mo in Nashville and that's his story for half of his stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That guy will drive hundreds of miles. Well, especially <laughs> in Tennessee, it's like, where are you gonna, where are you gonna find nautical stuff or like, you know, tiki stuff in Tennessee. So. Very targeted. So, uh, it's not leaking in here. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's leaking right down there. Oh, this, yeah. so, <laughs> so, what size is your tiki bar for those who are watching? Because you, you show it on video, but I don't know if you ever actually give out the, what, about 20 feet by 15 or so? Yeah, I guess that's probably accurate, but then it spills into the yard. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm just trying to get it for people who are watching, like it's oh, a right, ballpark yeah. idea. I mean, I think you're probably right. Yeah, it's probably like... Because people like to, will be like, oh, I, I really want to make a tiki bar, but I just have a spare bedroom. Or it's yeah. like, hey, if, you mm -hmm. if you're collecting mm -hmm. and you have even a small space, yeah. you can totally well, make well, a tiki Spike bar. Well, Spike didn't even technically have a space. <laughs> he made a, he space. Made a space. Yeah. Now, if you have the privilege of living somewhere where it doesn't get... 18 degrees outside, then the breezeway is a good option. Yeah, I mean, it's January right now. I can see my breath, but I'm, it's not, it's not crazy see, cool. See, I was, like, it was 18 degrees in Eugene last week, <laughs> covering with ice, and it's 75 tomorrow here in California. So it's, it's funny because everything in here is like meticulously placed, mm -hmm. but then this thing is always just kind of like a kind of a catch-all, and uh, yeah, I don't even know half the stuff that's on here. Just relax, gave me this guys. Relax. relax. <laughs> you know what he that got means? He some quality tiki it stuff from, from Party City. I'll let you know. This guy, he needs to relax a little. That's right. Just he a little works too hard, man. <laughs> Yeah. That's a little Frankie goes to Hollywood right there. It's the least tiki thing in this place. <laughs> we need what we need to get him is one of those leaky and the tiki signs. Oh yeah, yeah, this tiki is leaky. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go in the wayback machine, and I you know you touched on this a little bit. What what got you into tiki in the first place? I mean, you you're in Southern California. It's kind of in the culture down here. I know you were also in the rockabilly scene, the hot rod scene, several other things. Is is that where it came from? Uh, well, no, it came from. College. I had a graphic design professor who basically introduced me to tiki. Uh, the thrift stores in Stockton, California, were filled with tiki mugs called uh, from a place called the Islander. And at the time, I it was like '98 or '99, something like that. And I had no point of reference for these mugs that I was finding in the thrift stores. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know why it said the Islander on the back. I, it, which sounds so it sounds so crazy now because. Like, it's obvious to everybody now. Hi, I'm Duke Bossanova. I'm interrupting this video for just about 30 seconds to say thank you so much for everyone who supported us over the last 13 years here on Bossanova Life. Over 6 million views and 20,000 subscribers. We couldn't do it without all of you guys. So for the month of April and May, we're going to be opening up the Bossanova Life Secret Society. You'll be able to get one of our pens and four amazing coasters for just $20. If you donate at least $20 or join any of the tiers for annual support, you're gonna be made a Boston Nova Life Secret Society member. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for viewing this video all the way to the end. You're the real hero. Yeah. But back then, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. Like it, there was- It completely fell out of the culture. Totally fell out of the culture. At least a decade. Yeah. And so he explained that to me. And then I, I started going more and more, like I was, I was probably spending three days a week in the thrift stores in Stockton. It's not a whole lot to do in Stockton. And, and I was like, I felt guilty. I was like picking the, the Tiki Mug tree and just bringing them to the front desk. And it would be like, I don't know, Tiki Mugs for 50 cents. Oh yeah. 
Are you feel guilty? Oh my god. I he felt did, guilty. I was like, guilty. yeah. I mean, we we're, we're not huge mug collectors, which I know in the tiki world seems weird nowadays. But I've got about fifty, and it, and I've always been like, if I find them in the wild, yeah, I'll take them. If but I go to an event and get you. them. But, but back in those days, yeah, I mean, I didn't even start as early as you, but even you in can't 2000. You because Spike has them. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but even in 2010, you could still pick them up for a couple of dollars each. Right. And they were ever, now you can't, I can't find them anymore. But you weren't buying them at a, at a couple of dollars each, even? No, You're I like, was. Oh, you were? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying, I was buying them for a couple of dollars yeah. each. Oh, yeah. No, dude, I, like, I don't collect yeah, a ton of If I see another anymore. Trader Dick's mug, it'll be, <laughs> at least up in our area. Totally. They're everywhere. Yeah. Sparky lives here, so he can have this. <laughs> cigar wrappers. <laughs> cigar wrappers all over the floors. Like yeah. your favorite items? Yeah, everything on that back wall right there. Mm -hmm. um, was all from Oceanic Arts. And uh, if you followed the auctions that happened at Oceanic Arts, you know that master patterns, like the patterns that they, that they carved uh, production masks mm -hmm. off of were super valuable. These are all master patterns. So they would use these for copy carving. And uh, I got all of those at the same estate sale for, I don't know, $20 each. And then these masks were also from Oceanic Arts and they were hand painted by Leroy Schmaltz. And they actually are like cabinets, but nice. it's like everything up here. Like you'll never find that kind of stuff again for the prices that I found no. it. And I even left the price tags on a lot of them. This guy was $18. <laughs> it's just like, and it's hand carved. Yeah, palm. This is another master pattern. Same thing with like the moai down here that's, that was used for like table lighters and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this was like, they would punch that out and they, they'd put a table lighter in there so you could have this laying on your, or sitting on your uh, coffee table and you could light your smokes or whatever with it. I don't know, a lot of it was just good fortune because yeah. like how would you ever time that kind of thing to happen for you? Can bring you got that lit up like that? I'm gonna be in the background. Me and Sparky are gonna sit over here. Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> Sparky! There's a dog barking. There's Sparky. We brought your little dog too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Duke Bossanova. And I'm Lola Bossanova. And today we're in. Where are we? Costa Mesa? Are we in Costa Mesa? Bossanova.